Uh, now is over here. Uh, really quick, uh, my name is Seth Carbon. Um, I am from Berkeley, uh, Berkeley Bob uh, Bioinformatics Open Source Projects. I mostly work with uh, gene ontology data, and I also do some work for uh, the Monarch Initiative. And today I'm going to be talking about the Noctua modeling tool, which is a new modeling tool that we've been putting out for uh, curators of various resources. Um, so just really quick, uh, Noctua is a collaborative editing tool for RDF instance graphs. Uh, it's mostly designed for uh, modeling biological processes, but let me give you some context for what this all means. So within the gene ontology consortium, a lot of the model organisms uh, use, when they're trying to capture their annotation data and share with other people, they're using gene annotation format, which is this tabular row by row format. And you can see here we have a gene product, we have a go term, there is some you know, provenance information, there's evidence information, dates, so on and so forth. But there's not really any good way of tying this together into sort of a larger biological model. You have a lot of points of data, but you don't really get to tie all these different annotations together. So the goal of Noctua is to help curation at these model organisms uh, put together this data in a much more sort of coherent way. And so this is just a screenshot from the Noctua tool. Uh, can everyone hear me? I'm not on the mic, but I'm shouting. Are we all good? Okay, good. Uh, so this is a screenshot from the Noctua tool. In this case, this is, uh, what is this? This is intestine inflammation in mouse. And you can see that we're beginning to be able to put together a much more coherent picture of what's going on. And let me dig down a little bit into what exactly you're seeing here. So let's talk about the model. So the model used within Noctua is called the Lego model uh, by Huayumi and uh, Paul Thomas down at uh, USC. We're using AL for the actual modeling of the Lego inside the system. And Noctua itself is really just an abstract graph editor with a lot of sort of stuff put on top of it to make it useful to curators. So fundamentally within the Lego model, there's the Anaton. And the Anaton is a way of sort of modeling essentially what would be in the GAF a row of information. So we have a function, a location, the entity, and the process that it's involved with. So with the Noctua, this would look like, so in this case, we have the function is GPTase inhibitor activity. The location, it occurs in mitotic spindle pole. It's enabled by BFA1. So we have a gene there. And then we're going to add on, this is part of the exit from mitosis process. So we're able to sort of chain these larger concepts together and start making nice little graphs of what's going on. So we can see that this anaton is directly inhibiting GPTase activity. And so, also because this is an abstract graph editor, uh, we can also do things like, in this case we saw, we have actually evidence for all of these different things in here. And we can explore it out, and this gets a little bit more towards the owl level of uh, what's going on. Curators don't typically deal with this, but they can if they want to. So, also, sometimes users in other domains, people who are more interested in ontologies, can use this editor as well. Um, as well, underneath, we have a very complicated not super complicated, evidence model that we're using to be able to sort of capture all the information as it comes in from curators. And this is sort of what you're seeing down at the owl level with what's going on in there. We're also capturing things like date, the person who's actually doing the curation as they go, what organization they're using, if you have a certain funding source you want to mark an annotation for, so you can do reports later on, we're trying to capture that as well. And so what's going to be important here is we're also working on dealing with annotation spans from external resources. We're working with ActExpresso, hopefully we'll be working with Pub Annotation to be able to get spans into the evidence and to be able to work with external IDs so we can sort of, someone can be working in our tool, bounce out to another tool, bounce back in and we sort of captured this completely. So this is still in progress. Um, so how does the tool actually sort of look in real life as it works? And let me just go through this real quick. This is from a video, it's on the website, so you can just take a look at that. So start out here, you can just enter your information about the anaton, where it's at, what it's doing, uh, what gene you're using, start creating anatons within the uh, graph editor, create another one, you can relate them, just pull it over, pick your relation, and away we go. Just build up the model, and again, you can build up quite large models, again, we have the um, intestine inflammation. This uh, tool is also designed to sort of work 
large groups of people together simultaneously, so you have people at different locations across the world working on the same model at the same time. It's also very good for teaching in that way, where you can sort of build up stuff with, you know, when training new curators and stuff like that. So, for the stuff that's going to be more interesting here, let's talk about the interfaces and the kind of development software that we're doing under the hood. So it's a multi-tiered architecture, we have a lot of clients, we're working on different APIs, federation and tokens, so one of the important things is how do we know who's talking to us when you're using an external tool? How do we pass this information around? And also we have services for query and extraction. So this isn't meant to be super readable. We'll, we'll break it down, but I just want to show that it's basically three different layers. So there's a front-end layer, a messaging layer, and a back-end layer. And mostly what I want to talk about real fast is what's going on at the front-end in the API layer way up at the top. So basically this is just, there's a lot of different parts. We need to handle a token that proves a user is who they, who they say they are. Um, and we'll just assume that they've gotten that somewhere. We have a front-end API, and we also have like the graph editor and some other clients that, uh, that have been written for this system. Um, and all of this front-end, whether you're a client, whether you're the REST API, you're all communicating via a messenger under the hood that's going back to one of our servers. Um, so the JavaScript API is a very simple command language and it has operations, get, add, remove, so on and so forth. You can do all these things with different entities like the model, an instance within the model, uh, relations, class expressions within there, as well, and the output is gonna be things like an entire graph or a segment of the graph. This is really great for writing rich clients, but it's not so useful because it's, there's a lot of complexity. You've gotta sort of do a lot of handshaking. It's not so useful for doing things like going out to an external tool and coming back unless you're really interested in having a highly integrated tool. But using this JavaScript API, we already have several clients. We have a graph editor client for the Monarch initiative. We have Web Fino, which is tabular. It's designed to be working more with a medical, a rare disease data, stuff like that. We also have a REPL or REPEL, depending on how you want to say it. That's a much lower way of doing it for noodling around. If you want to just sort of work on developing the rich API. So the REST API and open questions around that, this is the kind of thing that I'd like to talk about and work on while I'm here, is we have Noctua. We need a way of getting information, contextual information about what we're doing, at the very least the user and what the user is looking at currently, get it out to an external tool, and then have enough of that yeah, contextual information come back along with the additional external data for the Noctua REST API to be able to sort of process it and build it into our models. And so the kind of questions that we're looking to answer, hopefully, is what's the best way of passing this kind of information around? We've been working with TechSpressive Central right now, um, and we figure out a pretty good, easy handshaking uh, mechanism that's kind of based on the way Galaxy operates, uh, for those of you familiar with Galaxy. Or, so that's one option, or do we want to use more standard REST patterns in passing stuff around? That would be simpler, but you'd have to have more operations made. We're not really sure what the best way to do that is. Um, and so what are the common uh, simple exchange formats that are out there? You know, we'd like to talk about those. If there's not one, maybe we can talk about one. We're looking for something that's pretty sort of high level. We, we don't necessarily want to get something to, you know, we're not trying to build an owl model here. We're just trying to communicate enough information to be able to reconstruct a link back to, to an external resource, enough contextual information to be able to have links and maybe, you know, some uh, summary information within the system. So, um, if you're interested in working as an external tool with the Noctua system, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and so this is just an example we do have for TechSpress or Central. Uh, this is essentially curl communicating with the Noctua stack. Uh, and the rest of the stack, this is the communication layer. It's all very interesting. And we're going to skip over that because it's not going to be pertinent probably for most people here. But I do want to mention in the very back end, We've recently put in a graph store, which we did not have uh, six months ago. We're using Blaze Graph now, going out to disk, and we also have a public graph store. So if, when these things get integrated, we should be able to have a public endpoint that people can make use of. Uh, so and that's also using Blaze Graph as well. Uh, so these are basically our current sites. So we have one public Noctua up here, noctuaburgabop.org. It's all BSD3 right now. Um, some of the backend stuff, I think it's Apache. Uh, there's Jenna for reasoning and stuff like that. Uh, and I'd like to give thanks to um, Jin Dong Kim for inviting us and the Blah3 organizers um, and our granting agencies and various help that we've had. Thank you very much. <laughs>